They're lining up behind you now. They all want to speak to you. First in line is a large black bird. It is huge and its wings are enveloping you. They are lifting you up into their wings. It is beautiful. They are holding you and stuffing flowers into your mouth. Red, yellow and black flowers. Eyes closed, the chakra reader said this to me. Apparently seeing whatever visions I was unknowingly projecting out of my body. Chills ran down my spine as I heard this. It was the first time I had ever had a chakra reading, and I couldn't make heads or tails of it. Weren't blackbirds every goth's mascot? They were symbols of death, a messenger of hard times, suffering, and destitution. What did it mean that this bird, the symbol of despair, was carrying me and feeding me? Later on that day at home, safely away from the terror of realizing that I was unknowingly projecting these things out of my body, I began to realize what exactly that particular vision actually meant. The answer crept into my mind and it stayed with me so that I could share it with you all now. Earlier that year, I had been asked to create an altar for a local Day of the Dead exhibition. For those of you that don't know, Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos in the States is a way for some Mexican Americans to honor their ancestors through procession, altars, and art. This exhibition, in honor for those that had passed on, was an opportunity for me to honor my uncle, who had recently passed away. A survivor of the Japanese American prison camps, he, along with the entire, my entire mom's side of my family, endured four years incarcerated during World War II for simply being of Japanese ancestry. They were uprooted from their homes, jobs, and businesses, and everything. They were only allowed to carry one suitcase with them to live in prisons constructed on barren landscapes, oftentimes located on Native American reservations. Which brings up an interesting point. My family's story is one all too common for Native and people of color in America. Existing in many forms, this is the underlying legacy of government policy fueled by racial hatred that is still alive and well today. To scapegoat entire groups of people is a strategy that we see play out when we talk about ending DACA, when we talk about starting the Muslim travel ban, allowing privatized prisons, and continuing the cycle of the prison and military industrial complex. These are all current policies that have roots in the genocide of Native people that have roots in the enslavement of African Americans, that have roots in the deportation of Mexican migrant workers through the Bracero program, and that have roots in the Chinese Exclusion Act. These histories of systematic injustices will no doubt continue, and that is why we need to continue to speak up and remember the entire history of this country and the racist laws that have shaped it. So in creating this art piece for Day of the Dead, I wanted to create an homage for him, my uncle, a high school student who was shipped off to the Navy as the rest of his family remained in prison in the camps. I wanted to create an altar for the entire generation of Japanese Americans who lived through that camp and who are passing on now, taking that legacy with them. And I wanted to create an altar for the rest of my family who live on and still carry that trauma. How would I do this? How would I create this homage that honored my family, their legacy, and this history in an appropriate way? Then I remembered visiting the Japanese American National Museum and remembered a volunteer tour guide, himself a survivor of the camps, who showed us a photo of a funeral that was happening in the camps. He showed us a picture of the beautiful floral wreath adorning a casket and told us how he should look closer because all of those flowers on that wreath were made by hand, out of paper, by camp prisoners. So this is a footage, film footage, of Japanese prisoners in the camps. Uh, I think this is Heart Mountain, Wyoming. And they're creating paper flowers together. It's all, be all to be constructed, constructed in one floral wreath. This is the finished wreath. I realized then in my own practice as an artist, albeit in subtle ways, I've always tried to represent the ways we cope. 
I am very interested in simple, small survival mechanisms we enact, even subconsciously, to find moments of healing and moments of catharsis and connection in the face of familial and historical trauma. Whether it's choosing to pick people in self-medicated bliss, or friends in an intense karaoke session, or the look on a friend's face during an emotional breakup, all these moments, including times of alienation and injustice, are painful, but necessary to heal and grow as beings. As people, we look for connection as a means for survival. In these Japanese-American prison camps, communal crafting and making flowers was not only a way to honor the dead, but a way to serve as a way to connect and mourn together as a community. So in the meaning behind the Blackbird vision, the meaning behind it became clear. The bird, a symbol of hard times, was nurturing me. In the way a bird feeds their young by stuffing food into their mouth, the blackbird was feeding me, the flowers that honor those hard times. That image told the story of myself as an artist, being inspired, inspired and nourished by those flowers that were born out of that trauma. I realized then as artists and as people, we have the strange ability to take something awful, something traumatic, and transform it. We can find inspiration in moments we'd rather forget, and we can take that memory and rework it and own it. I revisited this floral homage project in many forms, but realized that the crux, its meaning, is underlying need of artists and people in general to take pain and suffering and turn it into human creation, connection, and inspiration. Thank you. <laughs>